But let me ask you this. Are you having trouble believing? Let me tell you, as your spiritual coach, as your pastor, here I'm here to passionately express the joys of the power of faith that work within our lives and to help you on that journey of believing. We've been talking a lot about faith over the last couple of weeks. We've been talking about how we might ignite this power for it to work within us to be accomplishing the goals that we're called to accomplish here in this world, to be the manifestors that we're called to be, to be those who are living out this wonderful truth of the highest and best for our lives, of that which is a life of abundance, abundance of joy, peace, contentment, abundance of this wonderful sense of happiness and success and prosperity within our lives. Jesus called us to this wonderful journey, and we want to live it out to the fullest. But sometimes we have trouble believing. We just have a struggle with believing that all things are possible within the journey of our lives. There's a comedian said, you can do the possible. Yes, you can. You can do the impossible. Sure you can. Nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. When you think about it, well, there you go. You're accomplishing the impossible. You're doing nothing. You said nothing is possible. Nothing is impossible. There you go. You're living it out. Every single day of our lives, we're doing, you know, something that we make term as impossible without realizing it how fabulous it is. In this world today, sometimes we're just amazed that we're breathing, we're alive, we're kicking in this world. You know, we're realizing that the power of God is flowing through this body. And for many people, life seems impossible, but we live it each and every day within the journey of our life. Sometimes we just have trouble believing that it is possible for the impossible in our minds to take place to happen. Let's go to the gospel of Alice of Wonderland. That's right, the good news from Alice in Wonderland. You know, sometimes we forget that there's some very spiritual truths that are offered to us in simple stories. Maybe you've forgotten this from Alice in Wonderland, where the queen, there's no use in trying, Alice said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was your age, I always did it for a half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I believe as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Wow, now that's good news. That's an example for our lives. Believing for six impossible things before breakfast. Now, we may not say it's, that's a timeline for our lives that we're just believing before breakfast, but it's the lesson, are you believing at all? Are you taking time to believe for something that you might think is impossible? And are you changing your thought process from impossible to possible? You see, that's the good news of the Gospel of Alice in Wonderland is that we just need to practice. And I dare say, the queen says, you've not had much practice. And what happens is in our life, we just have and put to work the power of believing in all things, everything being possible with the journey of our life. We haven't practiced and the day's gone by, and breakfast has gone by, and lunch has gone by, supper has gone by, and we have not even put any practice to work of believing for possible things, believing the impossible to unfold within our lives. So how then do we begin to get this going? How then do we begin to get this belief going within our lives? How then do we begin to believe and begin to think that the impossible is possible within our lives? Well, it begins with some form of transformation. Transformation, some sort of change within our life. For the word transformation is really all about conversion. Now, within traditional Christianity, people talk about conversion all the time. People say uh, that you need to be converted. And I'll agree with that in the sense that when Jesus said, you must be born again, it's a conversion of thinking. It's a change within your life, a transformation that needs to happen. Be ye renewed by the transforming of your life, of your mind, says the Scripture, that this mind must experience some sort of conversion. You were thinking this way, now you're thinking this way. You have had a transformational experience within your life. It's very difficult to ignite the power of your faith if you've not been able to change your thinking, if you've not been able to make some sort of conversion you're still holding on to all these false beliefs, 
these things that have said it's impossible, it's impossible, it will never happen for you, it can't be done. And we echo that over and over again within our thought process. What we're doing is just reinforcing. And the call for today is for us to experience conversion, a transformation of thinking that has changed us completely from thoughts of saying I can to thoughts that say I can, thoughts of saying it's impossible to say I'm possible. That's what it's all about. When we've had this wonderful experience, we are really born again. We are starting anew. We are transformed. And that's what the master teacher, Jesus, was trying to get across to us. We have somehow confused that. We're thinking it's some sort of other kind of conversion, but it begins within our hearts and our minds that we must begin to say, I accept, I welcome now, I allow the unfolding of the positive within my heart and our lives. Because Scripture let us thus, lets us know that we have something to do with this faith process, this creation process, something that relates to us, and that's our thinking and our feeling. How important is that we brought those two things into alignment? Thinking, it's possible. Feeling, it's possible. Because when we release our mental attachment, and that means like we are attached to this, we're holding on to this Thinking of limitation, it's not possible. When we let go, when we release this, we we'll are then be able to embrace something new. We have that conversion experience, but that conversion only happens when I'm going to say, I'm going to stop thinking that it's not going to happen, and I'm now beginning to think it is going to happen. And that's the beginning of the power of faith, learning how to simply believe, believe that all things are working for our good to embrace it. We need to welcome it. We need to actually hug it. I love the word embrace. You know, this morning, a lot of you gave a beautiful embrace. Oh, a good hug, because it's been so long since we've hugged each other. And to welcome one another back and give us that wonderful, warm embrace. Well, that wrapping our arms around one another, well, how about we wrap our arms around this truth? And we begin to embrace it. We hug it. We draw it near. We pull it into our heart into us. I embrace this. I welcome it with such power and strength and believing that says, I know all things are possible for me because everything is possible, says scripture. Ah, but sometimes we've just fallen into a lie. That's right. The lie that says things are not possible because that's in a direct conflict with everything that we're being taught within scripture. All things, everything. So to believe that some things are not possible would just simply just say, I'm believing in a false belief, a lie, something that's contrary to everything that we hold dear to our hearts. For as long as we keep acting out that belief and reinforcing that lie, the thoughts and feelings that we have in our life are going to color or shape our reality. So we're going to wonder why we struggle, why it's so difficult. Why we're having a hard time believing? Because we're holding on. Somewhere there's still that lie that sort of has its claws, its hooks embedded into our thought process that says, you know, there are some things I just don't believe will be possible within my life. It is that deeper mind, that subconscious mind, that sometimes when we go in there, we begin to just do a little house cleaning and go through and say, wait a minute, what beliefs have I just allowed to settle into my deeper mind, my subconscious, that I act automatically from it? When something happens, our first reaction is to go to that subconscious, and we subconsciously react in a way that says, you know, this is the way we've been taught to react, right? We've just been taught, and we think this is the appropriate way to react. So there has to be a conversion. There has to be a transformation that happens within our lives that says, I may have been taught this, that there are things that are impossible. I have been taught this by the world around me, by the world of limitations, by conversations of others, by those who have been living, not believing. And they said, it doesn't work. It's, there will be things that will be impossible for you. And we bought into that. And we need to go in and do a little house cleaning within us to allow this because your life experience is going to be the outcropping of your accepted false or true truth. 
Because it is a lie that Scripture is echoed over and over again. It is a lie that will tell us over and over again. When you allow yourself to believe that things are impossible, that's what's going to be outcropped in your life. It's what's going to keep rising up. Impossibilities, impossibilities, impossibilities. You're going to have more difficulty, more hardship, more challenges within your life. But when you begin to shift, and you're now walking from this consciousness, this belief, all things are possible. You know what happens? You begin to believe and live from that, but suddenly your whole outlook in life and that which is outcropping or being revealed from you is possibilities. Possibilities galore. They begin to unfold for us. Now, your real you has access to all the creative forces of the universe because, well, you're a revelation of God. All the creative forces are there, and they're ready to be revealed. We realize this divine presence is in us, right? For Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within, not without. So if we're going to find that kingdom of heaven, that presence of God, we go within. And when we go within, we discover that presence is already here, waiting to be revealed, waiting to be released, waiting to be exercised, waiting to be shared, and how powerful that is. So when we face the what we may call the impossibilities, all we need to do is we trust in that power, that divine presence within, ready to unfold, ready to work the miraculous. So we recognize that anything other than that is simply a false belief. It's a lie. And we're going to get rid of those lies. For Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 says, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's right. We've got to clean out these thoughts and beliefs that hold us back. You know, it's very, uh, people say, practical to be of this mind. It says, you know what, Pastor, some things may not work out in your life, and that's practical, you know. That's really practical to say, you know, we may believe for something, but how about plan B or plan C or plan D? Because when A doesn't work out, we need to fall back on B. That's just good common sense, we may say. It's good earthly sense, but it's not good heavenly sense. Heavenly sense, I believe, and I step out in faith, and when I believe all things are possible, they're possible. Peter was invited to get out of the boat and walk on water, right? Right? And when he believed that it was possible, he stepped out of the boat. But when he began to question and say, wait a minute, what's plan B? What's plan B here? Because if I start to sink in this, I need, where's my life raft? Where's my lifesaver? Where are the stones I could step on? Who's going to rescue me? I don't know how to swim, all these kind of things. I need a plan B. You see, that's when he let go of the power of believing all things are possible. And he began to sink. And too often in life, We're invited to step out of the boat, and we may take a couple of steps in great faith, and then we've allowed the voices of this world around us that is so focused on the physical and its limitations to say, you need a plan B, you need a plan C, because A is probably not going to work out for you. So this is why it's so important that we become people who have had a conversion of conscious, a transformation. Be ye transformed by the renewing. Renewing is the key word here. You've got to renew every day. You've got to be born again every day. So shall we say in our consciousness, our thinking, that says every day I make this fresh new conversion, this fresh new transformation of my mind from thinking of it's impossible to now thinking it is now possible. And I want to be filled with this. Too often we're filled with to the brim of negative thinking. So full that it's hard to even find space within your consciousness for a positive thought because all you've seen and welcomed into your life is that this is difficult, this is hard, this is not going to work out for me, things aren't going to be uh, possible within the journey of my life, uh, there's so many difficulties here, and we're filled to the brim with that kind of thinking. And so we're having trouble welcoming anything new within our life. So sometimes what we have to do is pull the plug on the bathtub and allow the drain of negative thinking to work and drain it all out. Let it all go out and allow there to be room and space to welcome a new way of thinking, a transformation, a renewing of our mind that enables us to have something experienced that's powerful. The scripture says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. So it starts out by saying, don't conform, don't mold and shape your life and your thinking, 
to the world around you? Because we say this every week, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We keep thinking we're physical beings trying to have a spiritual experience. But we're spiritual. You are the soul. That's who you are. A soul that is living and breathing and contained within this temple, this body. You are a spiritual being. So we begin to see everything from our spiritual perspective versus our physical perspective. So it says, don't be shaped, don't be conformed. And we have to ask ourselves, what kind of mold are we fitting into? Are we being conformed by a world of limitation? Or are we being transformed to a world of infinite possibility? So what's happening in our outer world is simply what's going on or mirroring what's going on inside you. So every hardship, every difficult you're you're facing is a mirror of your inner beliefs that are within you. Life is hard. Life is difficult. There's going to be problems. I don't have enough. I'm going to be, I'm this close to poverty. We begin to believe all that. We live from that and it's mirrored outward. From what's going on within, we find is being revealed outside or in our life. It's reflecting back, or your life is reflecting back your inner beliefs. So if you don't like what your life is and you don't like where it's at right now, how about we do a little transformation, a conversion? We start molding and shaping our life in a new way. In that new way that what we allow is the form we want to fall to is that wonderful form of possibilities infinite opportunities within us. For as long as you continue to believe the same fact in the present moment, conditions are going to remain to be the exact same thing. Isn't that true? We keep doing same old, same old, same old, same old. It happens over and over again because we keep thinking, oh, you know, pastor, would you pray with me? Church, would you pray with me? Others, would you believe with me? We want to do treatment within my life for something amazing to happen, but... It's the same old, same old, because you're still echoing disbelief. Somewhere you're holding on to the idea it may not happen. It's not going to happen. What's plan B? What's plan C? We need plan D. We got we to figure this all out because it may not work for us. And so what happens is we keep uh, experiencing the same old, same old, and it's time to accept the fact that all things are possible, and the key word is accept. Accept to welcome it in, to accept it as your truth. That no matter what you're experiencing, it's and your power of believing for it is ignited, it's going to happen for you. And what will happen is that you will, when you accept this desire as true as possible, not someday, but right now, right now, it's going to happen. Because I want to tell you this. You know how we always say, well, maybe tomorrow? How many of you have ever lived in tomorrow? None of us. Tomorrow has never come, right? Because once we get to tomorrow, it's now the now. And we're looking for the tomorrow. Isn't it funny? Because we say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. But tomorrow never happens. I'll believe for it tomorrow. Something's going to happen for me tomorrow. Something good will happen to me tomorrow. But you realize you never live in tomorrow. But you do live in the now, the right now. So what we're doing is we need to accept that things are, not will be. So our faith is all about it is now. It is. It is present, we say, and so it is. But how many of you add tomorrow Uh, or maybe or someday or but no? And so it is means it is amen. It is happening right now. It is there for me in this moment. And when we begin to embrace that understanding that it's the now that we accept it, this is what happens. You begin to feel you have your desire. You begin to think that the answer is already accomplished for us, not someday, but right now. What we have to understand that we live in the now. Our answer will be found and experienced in the now. And if you want it in the now, you believe it's happening in the now, and you begin to welcome that kind of thing. And you begin to live from it. For one moment, think about this, filled with the thoughts and feelings of your prayer already being answered right now, 
is more powerful than a thousand affirmations. A lot of us like to do affirmations. We're trying to keep trying to affirming and affirming and affirming and affirming. God's doing something great. God is good all the time. All this kind of stuff. We're affirming, affirming. But you know what? If you just stopped and said, right now, the desire of my heart is, trans, is unfolding. I'm transforming my thinking. That The desire of my heart, the answer to my prayer, I'm experiencing it right now. Right now. That's the key for it to be unfolding for you. For then that which you're believing begins to become mirrored or reflected out. You know, I've shared this story with many of you in classes, but I love to share this story over and over again. You know, I bought a house with a big front yard, and what I wanted so badly was a sidewalk. A sidewalk that would go to the street and welcome people in, because I love hospitality, and I've got a big front door, and I say, how do you get to the front door? There is no sidewalk. Do I walk across the grass? Do I invite people to walk across my lawn? People say, oh, I can't walk across. Well, how do you get there? Do you go up the driveway, go around behind the house, circle around? How am I going to get to the front door? There was a sidewalk, but it was somewhat hidden by the landscaping. And it was coming from the driveway along the front. But I wanted to, to sense and have people sense and feel the sense of you're welcome. Come on in. Hospitality. My home, is, my door is open for you. So I began to say, let's plan for a sidewalk. Well, I began to investigate the cost of a sidewalk and the landscaping I wanted to go with. It was, whoa, it was a little bit more than what I was prepared and didn't know if I would have the funds. But you know what? Every day I would take the dog out the front door and walk down my sidewalk. And my partner Robert would say, what are you doing? I said, I'm walking the dog on the sidewalk. What sidewalk? We don't have a sidewalk. Oh, yes, we do. I believe we have a sidewalk. And I'm walking the dog up and down the sidewalk. We're like, Ugh. Okay, there is going Paul, going kind of crazy on me, you know, a little bit insane. But I said, no, this is my faith. I'm going to walk up and down that sidewalk and believing that it's there already, and it already is, and it's here right now. And so I'm acting as if there's already a sidewalk. Come on, walk with me on the sidewalk. Was, this is a little silly. What do the neighbors think? Oh, we're walking our sidewalk. And so the neighbor asked me one day, what are you all doing out there? And I said, we're walking a sidewalk because we're going to put a sidewalk. Oh, good. When are you going to put the sidewalk in? Well, we're just really feeling that that sidewalk is already there. So we're, we're already walking as if. She goes, okay. A few days later, the landscaper who was coming in to put in a new lawn for us, we were changing out the grass from a fescue to zoysia grass. And uh, we began to say, you know what? Uh, before you lay down the, the uh, grass, I really want to prepare for this sidewalk. Said, what? You want a sidewalk? Yeah, I do. Well, I can put a sidewalk in for you. You can? Uh, he said, yeah, I'll do it for free. I'll just throw it right in in the plan because it'll save me some hassles with landscaping and everything, and we can uh, create good drainage, and yes, it works for me. I said, well, if it works for you, it works for me. Ah, and you know what? I got my sidewalk, because I believe in the now, and lived as if. Crazy as it may seem, crazy it may be for us to say we're walking in that kind of faith, but that's how you walk on water. Peter gets out of the boat and doesn't question and doesn't say, well, I'll get out of the boat when I see the steps. I'll get out in the boat when there's a floating platform. I'll get out in the boat when I, you know, I have the life preserver on. I'll get out of the boat. He got out of the boat. And you know what? He actually walked on water. And what is the story telling us? That when we believe and we live as if, we're able. It's there and it's able right now. But when we question, when we begin to doubt, we sink. He began to sink. And, you know, we'll be drowning in this thought process that says, I don't know how it's going to work. It may not ever happen for me. You see, that's that wavering faith within our lives. So what we want to do is this, that how you feel right now, how would you feel right now if your dream, your prayer was answered? How would you feel about that? Let's say you're praying for healing. How would you feel right now if you were healed? Let's say you're praying for a new job. How would you feel right now if you got that job? How would you feel right now if you're praying for some blessing or some uh, wonderful gift in your life or just some joy and happiness? How would you feel? I invite you to feel that right now. Feel as if. And when you're feeling as if, when you're walking the dog up and down the sidewalk as if, when you're living that life as if you're getting out and you're walking on water as if, that's the joy you're feeling and that's how you pray with faith, believing. You capture that feeling. And you express it right there and now. 
you begin to create this feeling of satisfaction. Let me tell you this. Here's a spiritual law. We may call it the law of attraction. I'm going to call it the law of satisfaction in the spiritual life. When you feel satisfied as if it is yours, you've really ignited the power of your faith and believing. You're satisfied. You say, I already have it. I'm satisfied, right? How's the feeling when you have got that new job? You're satisfied. How does it feel when you've got healing in your life? You're satisfied. How does it feel when you've gotten some sort of sense of prosperity in your life or blessing? You feel satisfied, right? How about we move and implement the law of satisfaction? I'm walking in God. Satisfied. I know that I know that I know. The answer to my prayer is already here. I'm satisfied. And I'm feeling that satisfaction of an answer already alive and at work within me. Let's live out this law of satisfaction. For when we believe it, when we live as if, what we're doing is we're mirroring it out into the world and our world begins to shape and respond in the wonderful ways according to our believing. So I want to remind you this, that in faith, there's no yesterday or tomorrows. There's only now. We can't live in yesterday. It's gone. We can't live in tomorrow, but we can live in now. And there's no not having in faith. Is only having. Because faith that says, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, is a negative faith that says, you're right, you don't have, you don't have, you don't have. But in faith, it's always having. I have healing. I have prosperity. I have blessing. I have love. I have happiness. I have joy. I have peace. Whatever it is that you're seeking in your life, faith is not having. Faith is having. Having it already. For if only for a moment you can put aside these doubts and fears and feel the reality of this fact and create the feeling that you're blessed, well, what happens then is amazing things begin to unfold for us within our lives. The single most important thing you can do to believe in that which you think is impossible is to change your thinking. Have a conversion. Be ye transformed. Start changing. And I want to tell you, here's one of the key things. Start changing your words. That's right. Because our words have incredible power. And though we may be great people of faith, sometimes we say some things that, you know, are contrary to what we said we were believing. So watch your words very clearly. Don't say anything that you don't want to transpire within your life or you don't want to have see unfold for you. Don't say it. Don't speak it. Because you're like, oh, you know what? I'm so stupid. We say that a lot, don't we? Oh, I'm this. And, and you know what? All you're doing is saying and affirming that in your own life, that's what you believe about yourself. No? So let's watch our words and choose words that every word that we speak, I want you to know, is recorded in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. It goes into your deeper mind. Every word you're saying, words when you doubt yourself, you question yourself, you question your experience, it goes deep in. What you're doing is planting seeds. So we've got to be very careful about the words that we want, that we want to accept. For to believe a thing is impossible is to make it so. If you believe it's impossible, you know what? You just made it so. You made it impossible. I'm going to tell you this. A lot of our words, our thoughts, and our feelings are creating impossibilities. They're creating the impossibility. Because we keep echoing it. We keep speaking them. We keep thinking them. We keep welcoming them. So let's get rid of impossible. Can we just er eradicate that from our language? And just let's get rid of the word impossible. Let's just release that and let's just change it. Let's have a conversion. Let's have a renewing of our mind. Let's have a, a born-again experience where we begin to think in a new way. Instead of thinking everything's impossible, to start thinking now that we believe and know right now. In this now, things are possible. St. Augustine said this, faith is to believe what you do not see. And the reward of that faith is to see what you believe. That's what it's all about. Faith is to believe what I don't see. I don't see my healing just yet. I don't see that, but I'm believing it. I'm believing it. I don't see my sidewalk, but I'm walking it. That's right, I'm walking it up and down. I'm taking the dog. I'm going to get the mail. I'm meeting my 
uh, neighbors. I'm walking it. Faith says, I believe what I don't see. And in the end is, I see exactly what I believe. Are you ready? Let's take on the words from the Gospel of Alice of Wonderland. Listen to the words of that queen. I dare you haven't, I dare say you haven't practiced very much. Hmm. How about us saying, I'm going to practice, 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 practice. Spend time believing and you will receive. The gospel from Alice in Wonderland. She said, there are many days when I began to believe at, for six things before breakfast. Began to believe that six impossible things were possible even before breakfast. Think about that. What a day you're going to have. What incredible faith life you'll create. What a wonderful experience you're going to have when you begin to say, I am practicing that which I believe, and I'm putting it to work. I'm igniting it as my day begins right now. I'm transformed. I'm renewed. I've had a conversion. I'm thinking in a new way. I know it's all possible. And that's the journey of how we believe. Amen.